Hey everyone, welcome back to another week of Striper Migration Reports from On The Water. It has been a big week for striped bass fishing up and down the entire coast, but we're gonna kick things off down in the Chesapeake Bay. May 1st marks the start of trophy striped bass fishing season in Chesapeake Bay, which means anglers are allowed to keep 135 inch fish or bigger. But until then, it is strictly off limits. Over the past week or so, there's been word of a lot of big striped bass in the 30 pound class moving out of the Chesapeake Bay tributaries and out of the bay into the Atlantic. Those stripers are making their way up the coast as well as some of the larger fish that are now leaving the Delaware Bay. So Southern New Jersey saw a great push of some quality fish this week. Most of the action is gonna be in the surf, but there were a few fish pushing 30 pounds that were caught in the backwaters. Captain Brian Williams of Bad Fish Charters in Ocean City, New Jersey, took a lucky client out and she landed a near 30 pound striped bass on artificials. Now that's a big jump compared to last week's report when most of the fish we were seeing were 20 to 30 inches. Those fish were mostly biting around the bridges at night, riding those shadow lines and picking off bait as they get pushed through with the tide. And now this week, chunked bunker and clams are the main baits of choice that anglers are using in the surf. Now moving up the coast just a little bit, the crew at Grumpy's Tackle and Seaside Park again reported a great clam bite in the surf. If you missed last week's video, we talked very briefly about how they are clam connoisseurs at the Grumpy's Tackle. Their slogan being, throw the snot. The snot, of course, is, you know, the gooey clam bellies that you're chucking into the surf for, uh, that you're chucking into the surf for stripers. Now, while clams are always a great option, overnight it seemed like the plug bite turned on in New Jersey. We got reports of surf casters on the night shift landing schoolie to slot size bass and, and a few overs on various minnow plugs. When calmer conditions allowed for it, bombers and red fins were responsible for a lot of catches. But in stronger winds, longer casting minnow plugs that dive a little bit deeper into the surf, like Daiwa SP minnows and Yozuri Hydro minnows, have also been putting fish on the beach for anglers on the night shift this week. But swimming plugs are not the only bait worth keeping in your bag this week. Paul Marzola of Jersey Shore Fishing caught a beautiful bass on a 10-inch blurple big bait fishing LLC paddle tail. Especially in areas where there's bunker around, swimming a blurple plug or paddle tail in those low light areas is really going to be a great option for surf casters looking to weed through those smaller fish at night. There's still a ton of bunker around in northern New Jersey, so for the boats that are out there targeting bass in Raritan Bay area, live bait is still probably your number one option, but keep a couple flutter spoons on board in case live bait is not readily available. It seems like a lot of that crazy action that was happening in northern New Jersey along the beaches and in the back bays and rivers has kind of shifted a little bit north as the bigger fish push around Long Island. The live bait fishing with bunker around New York City is still lights out, but again, flutter spoons are a must have on board if live bait is not doing the trick. 40 inch bass in the 20 pound range are pushing along the north and south shores. And even though the schoolies and slots are in much thicker than the bigger fish, a little extra hard work will go a long way. Our new Western Long Island and New York City Fishing Report author, Nick Cancelier, has been catching a lot of schoolies and slot sized fish from his kayak on the North Shore. So he decided to switch up his tactics. He put away the paddle tails and took out the good old tube and worm rig and started trolling around. Turns out the tube and worm rig revealed that there was bigger fish there the entire time. Sometimes a different technique is all it takes to reveal where those bigger fish are. Now on the west end, on the south side of Long Island, Jamaica Bay is loaded with fish right now. Again, most of those fish are gonna be schoolies and slots, but there have been plenty of overslots in the mix. And those fish seem to be biting on pretty much everything, live bait, bucktails, and some explosive top water bites in the early morning hours. The Great South Bay is also seeing a ton of action from slot fish this week, and mixed in with them are some chopper bluefish. So if you're fishing those swim shads and paddle tails, Make sure you got a couple extra tails on you because the bluefish are going to rip right through them. And nothing ruins a good swim shad bite like a couple big bluefish. If you're fishing with top water in the surf, especially around inlets and immediately in the back bays, don't be surprised to hook into a big blue or two. Skipping back up to the North Fork of Long Island, on the Long Island Sound side, North Fork anglers saw their first push of migratory bass earlier this week. Again, a lot of the success was on heavier bucktails and big swim shads in those sweeping currents of the Long Island Sound. A couple anglers have been prying the North Shore bays during the daytime and finding solid schoolie bites, but to target some of those bigger fish that are going to be moving out there in the next week or two, the nighttime hours is the number one time to go out. Big paddle tails have also been responsible for some of the larger fish caught in the surf. Earlier this week, our Eastern Long Island Fishing Report author, Tim Regan, caught a fish in the 20 pound class range on a seven inch Z-Man paddle tail swim bait. Now the reason those big paddle tails have been so successful in the surf is because those bass are cruising tight to the shoreline on their way east around the tip of Long Island. So as they head towards Montauk, they're gonna be cruising along the shoreline, close to those inlets in particular, to feed on bait fish that are moving in and out of the inlets with the tide. 
As some of those larger migratory bass continue to head up from the Delaware Bay and Chesapeake Bay area, New Jersey and Long Island are definitely in for another wave of 20 to 30 pound class fish. Now, perhaps the best news of the week, at least for me, is that I finally caught my first migratory bass of the year. I was prying the back bays and the rivers around Cape Cod for quite some time um, with everything from swim shads and paddle tails to the fly rod to small swimming plugs. Had no luck whatsoever. And finally, um, as I was thinking to myself one night, you know, this is getting really old. Uh, I actually had a mid 20 inch class fish strike my paddle tail. Now, hopefully that's the first of many for the next week or so, because with all the bait that's swimming around on Cape Cod right now, from squid to herring to bunker, the bite is about to blow wide open. Some schoolies have even pushed through the Cape Cod Canal, but I'm not going to spoil anything here. I'm going to let Jimmy Fee take it from here and fill you in on the bite around New England this week. In the words of Ron Burgundy, well, that escalated quickly. We went from schooly striped bass just getting into Cape Cod and New England to now we have migratory stripers as far north as Boston. We've got fish to 20 pounds moving up into Buzzards Bay. Things have really lit up over the past week. Beginning in Connecticut, we're starting to see some migratory fish move from Long Island Sound into the tidal rivers, joining the holdovers that have been there since last fall. They're feeding on herring, which continue to move up these rivers in pretty good numbers, and bunker, which are just flooding southern New England right now. In Rhode Island, earlier this week, we started to hear of fish feeding on top on herring, even some on bunker. We know our friend Dustin Stevens got into some nice fish with topwaters in his kayak. And Wednesday, I was out tog fishing with Captain BJ Sylvia and Captain Rob Taylor, and we had a great day of tog fishing. But I was taught that lesson that I should totally already know by now is do not go tog fishing in the springtime without striper gear on board. As we were moving between some of their tog spots, we came across a giant flock of seagulls, went over to investigate and found striped bass. Some of them looked to be north of 20 pounds beating up on herring. We had only two top waters on board, but once they hit the water, you had good striped bass following them, blasting them out of the water. When you'd hook a fish, each one would have five or six followers. It was pure spring run mayhem. And uh, I know I won't be going out tog fishing again this spring without having a full complement of striper lures. Now, while that was happening in Narragansett Bay, we started getting similar reports from Buzzards Bay as well. Now you're seeing striped bass move in all the salt ponds and estuaries and harbors because that is where the water's warmest. But fishermen out in Buzzards Bay are finding schools of migratory fish in the open water as well, catching them on shads, flies, and even top waters. Now most of these fish are what I would call good-sized schoolies, fish in the 20, say 22 to 26 inch range. But fishermen have reported fish to 36 inches already on Cape Cod, both from the boats during the day and after dark from shore. Now, our intrepid fishing reporter from Boston, Ron Powers, reported striped bass up to 27 inches caught this week as far north as the North Shore. Fish with sea lice on them. And those first fish that Ron heard about came on a classic spring run lure up there, and that is the Cocoho Minnow, fished on a small jig head and worked along the bottom. Things definitely seem to be running a little bit ahead of schedule this spring. This is as early as I can remember hearing of migratory striped bass north of the Cape and hearing about 20 pound fish and slot size fish already south of the Cape. And it's not even May 1st yet. And speaking of May 1st, that is the kickoff of the 2023 Striper Cup. If you haven't signed up yet, we'll put a link in the description below. So throughout the course of the tournament, we'll be giving away great prizes from pen rods and reels, Yeti, Rapala, Casa Del Mar, Bubba Blade, and a bunch more. So make sure you sign up at that description below. Get out there and enjoy the striper fishing. It is just getting better. We haven't even seen that first wave of 30 pound plus fish yet, but based on how things have been going so far this spring, I'd say we're only about a week, week and a half away from that in Southern New England.